Well, hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian, and today we're gonna be doing a little bit of an experiment in terms of solar panel and what can it power and how long and all that good stuff. I'm gonna be using two 100 watt Bouge RV 9BB solar panels. I'm going to be installing them, what well, you can't see right now, up on my pergola roof and see how long I can run one of my 12 volt big coolers. Because the last couple of tests I've done, I haven't been able to keep the solar panels out all day. I've had to move them in and out. So this way I can actually keep them up on the roof attached semi-permanently and see you know, how, how, what type of runtime we're gonna get. Now these are the upgraded Bouge RV panels. They're the nine bus bar panels. They're half cut cells. They're supposed to be more efficient, provide more power. So we're gonna give the, th these a shot and I'm using the Bouge RV uh, just tilt mounts. Now these are the 28 inch tilt mounts. And I have these solar panels set to about 28 degrees because according to the all knowing Google, that is the optimal angle for my zip code in September of 2022. Next step is I'm gonna get these installed up there and then I'm gonna run all the, all the wires down and we'll get this thing hooked up and we're gonna let these solar panels work this week to see how much power I can generate and I will be able to monitor it through my MPPT 40 amp controller. Let's get going. Okay. Well, that's gonna work out perfect with these tilt mounts and my pergola rafters. All right, well, that wasn't too, too bad. Now I gotta get the other panel up here and I'm probably gonna have to stagger it a little bit because this isn't wide enough to put two of them side by side directly. I'll have to figure that out, but let's get the other one out here. Sweet. Man, it is already blistery hot. All right, folks, so let me show you the setup. I got everything kind of connected and, and ready to go. So I got my two 100 watt panels up there. They are connected in series and I've got the wiring coming down, just this column right here and connecting into the back of my little DIY cart thing that I built. So nothing special there. And I am running this 48 quart 12 volt cooler because it pulls around 65 watts on startup. And that's very similar to my chest freezer that I have in my garage, believe it or not. Either that's really not efficient or my chest freezer is very efficient. But even when that compressor kicks on, it doesn't go over 70 watts that I've seen it. So I think this is going to be a pretty comparable test because I can't bring my chest freezer out here. So that's why I'm using that. Now, I, it's, it's kind of full. I've got, I've got some beer and a couple of ice packs in there so it's not completely empty so that should help maintain the internal temperature of it and then my battery here is at 100 percent so my panels really aren't pulling anything right now because of the charge controllers not letting anything get through because i don't need to put anything into my battery but let me show you a screenshot of the charge controller app so i'm opened up the bouge rv little charge controller and you can see right now it's getting 40.9 volts in there, but I am not putting anything. I'm putting one watt into the battery just because that charge controller is doing its job and not letting too much juice get back into the battery because it doesn't need it right now. But after tonight, when this battery gets drained from running it all night long without solar panels, tomorrow should probably be a better display of how these solar panels work or even later in later in the day. But right now you can see 40.9 volts. Um, I'm only inputting five tenths of an amp into the battery right now just because it doesn't need it and we'll go from there i'll let this thing run for a couple days and see you know how these solar panels act and how long it keeps this cooler running for so guys i'll keep checking back in see all right you. folks well update number one it's the same day and it's around 5 p.m and i'm already getting a little bit of shade well actually pretty much that far panel is already in the shade sun setting down over here going behind these bushes. So, so I'm probably gonna get about four to six hours worth of sunlight off of those panels. Um, it looks like the, the highest I was ever able to get today was 158 watts. So that's not too bad. 
Uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll get a little bit better idea. And I went ahead and installed a little watt meter on this thing and it looks like the highest wattage this thing used was 114 watts. So I guess it's so hot out here, uh, I, I honestly wasn't aware that that cooler pulled that many watts. So it actually pulls more than my chest freezer, go figure. I'll check in in the morning. My battery's at 99.3. And I am charging actually right now a massive four watts. So that's gonna get us a really long ways. I can see why this stuff's addicting. It's fun to kind of track and monitor how much free energy you can get, you can make. So anyway, folks, I will check in in the morning and we'll see where the battery's at and we'll, we'll continue to monitor this thing. So see you soon. Welcome back to day two, everyone, and my little 100 watt solar panel experiment. It is 11.30 and I basically have full sun on these things. Now, if you're brand new to solar panels, let me explain something to you. Between series and parallel, connections these two are tied up in series and the benefits to that are i can use thinner gauge wire which costs less money and i can have a longer run of that wire to my charge controller the downside to series connections is that if you have just a tiny bit of shade on one panel it basically reduces the entire solar panel array output that's layman's terms there's a whole lot that goes into that but basically that's 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 what it is if i could have parallel connected these which i could have i just don't have the branch connectors and i don't have thicker gauge wire that's why i did these in series if i had a little bit of shade on this solar panel it really wouldn't affect this one as much and my problem is is that i get shade on this panel right here this thing is pretty much completely shaded while this one is getting full sun but my solar panel output is terrible because that one's shaded because it's in series connection but right now i've got a tiny little shadow i don't know if you can see it one of the solar panels is casting a shadow on this solar panel about five inches worth of shadow and it's just a shadow from the bracket from the mounting bracket and it's reducing the output i am now getting 121 watts and you'll see it here on the screen and that's due to the fact i've got a tiny little shadow once that sun comes up just a little bit more both of these solar panels are going to be completely free of any shadows and i'll get much better output results but again that's because these are series connect i'm not a solar panel expert but that's what i've learned in case you are brand new to this and you're trying to figure out do i need a series connect or a parallel connect my battery right now is at 82 percent it was at 100% last night, so it's been running basically without any solar for over 12 hours, um, and it's gone down about 20%. So we'll see how much juice these, little, these 200 watts worth of solar panels can put into my battery today before the sun goes down and I'm basically without solar at around 4.30 or 5 o'clock. So I don't have a very big window with where these are at, but my main goal of this video is to figure out how much output can these two solar panels create when conditions are basically perfect. It's gonna be almost 100 degrees and hotter the solar panels are, the less output they will give off, which seems contradictive. These solar panels are rated, their wattages are rated typically based off around a 77 degree ambient temperature. When it's 100 degrees outside, they're not gonna produce as much energy. I'm at 35.8. So my cooler's at 35.8, so it's maintaining temperature just fine. I don't know if this is gonna be a full runtime test. I really just wanna test these solar panels to see how much I can get from them mounted up to a roof structure instead of sitting on my driveway like I did in the last test. So I'll probably keep this running for, for another day or two. So folks, I will check back in in a few hours and I'll update you on my max wattage that I was able to get from these two solar panels and I will show you where the battery's at and we'll probably check back in. Well friends, I think I've kinda hit the solar peak of today. It is only 3.30 p.m. but the sun it's kind of going over midpoint and I'm about to go down behind some bushes over here, up there. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I've got so far. I'll put the app up here and show you what I'm looking at. But so far I'm pulling 140 watts off of those panels and I'll put a temperature sensor on those. But it is 97 degrees outside today right now. So again, those aren't going to be as efficient if it was say 80 degrees. But the max charge I was able to get out of these two solar panels today so far has been 152 watts. And folks, that's honestly not too bad from two 100 watt panels. That's basically 75, 76, you know, watts a piece if you cut it in half. And with it being so hot outside, that's not too bad. But I'm gonna take this temperature sensor and I'm going to see if we can get a reading. Yeah, and I got 103.6 degrees on the left one. So those panels are definitely hot. It has put in quite a bit of juice in the battery today though. So I'm at 90.6. So 
So I put about 10% back into the battery today. Now th these things aren't done. It's gonna obviously run until the sun goes completely down. So I'll be able to get more than 90%, but I'm just gonna call it quits for right now in terms of the video. So we will check back in in the morning and see where we're at. Welcome back to day three of the solar panel experiment. It is around 4.30, so again, I'm gonna be starting to lose my, my good solar sun here in about 30 minutes, so I wanted to come out and show you guys where we're at with the battery. And it's gotten back up to about 90% today. 89 and a half, so, you know, that's really not bad for this thing going on three days. The high wattage that I was able to pull today from these panels up there is 148 watts. Yesterday was 152, so we're gonna average that out and say over two days, these things averaged 150 watts, which is pretty good. Um, it's been 98 to 99 degrees both days. So it's been very, very hot out here, which again, diminishes the efficiency of these guys. So the hotter it is, the less those put out in terms of actual usable wattage going back into my battery. So I'm pretty happy with averaging 150 watts over two, two and a half days. I'll probably keep this thing running a couple more days and then we'll see where we get from there. But so far, you know, again, two 100 watt panels, tied together in series, averaging 150 watts in 98, 99 degree temperature, basically two cloudless days, so I'll take it. So we will check back in tomorrow. Well, folks, we are on day four. It is 10.30 in the morning, and I just kind of wanted to come out here to show you kind of what I'm dealing with again. So one of the panels is completely shaded, and one of the panels is half shaded. So again, with serious connection, I'm basically getting nothing right now, but I wanted to show you the battery before I really start getting solar inputs in here. So. So we're sitting now at 72.8, 73% battery state of charge. All right, everyone, this is day five. I'm gonna wrap up the test today and my battery is at 73.2%. So let me show you the panels. I've got pretty much full sun on them right now. So I'm gonna let those soak up all of the solar it can today. And by around 4.30 or five o'clock today, I'm gonna call it quits and see where it'll get me to on my battery in terms of state of charge. And we should have a pretty good idea what those panels can do to power something like a cooler like this is pulling around 60 to 70 watts when the compressor runs. So we'll check back in later. See ya. Well, hey folks, I am wrapping up the test of these two 100 watt panels. We've been running it for five days and I'm pretty much calling it quits and the battery is at 85%. And it's actually still charging. Let's go take a look. So it's getting a little bit of charge. And in fact, I'll pull up the, the app here. It's getting four watts right now. So it's still charging. But let me go into historical data and we'll be able to see on average kind of what I got through the five days. So from 918 to 923, you can see that, that kind of yellowy top line. That is my average charge amount. These two panels provided 150 watts worth of juice to my battery and that's not bad at all considering it's been close to 100 degrees every single day here this week in texas 150 watts i'll take it all day long so i'm pretty pretty happy with the way that these panels perform but i'm going to call it quits because there's really not much else to do besides coming out here every single day and eventually i wouldn't be able to keep up with this cooler but i've only lost 15 percent off of the total 100% state of charge in five days. So guys, thanks for sticking around for that little fun little test, but stay tuned for the next video because I'm gonna be testing out and comparing the 180 watt panels versus the 200 watt panels from Bouge RV and put them side by side and see if it's really that big of a difference between the two panels. So stick around for that. That'll be coming up here in the next week or two, but guys, thanks for watching. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye.